and welcome to Modeling by Example Travel Request. This is part two, so I hope you watched part one and uh, we are going to start there where we left off in the first part. We have had this case plan model with the defined travel data stage in which we have the modified travel data task, then we have the approved travel and the organized travel. Now, we also added two forms, the start form and the work form. When we publish this and go then to global work, we can start a new case by going to new, then to work. We would like to travel to Paris for an important customer meeting. And our origin is Zurich, destination is Paris, and we are traveling next week. When I create that travel request, I have here my case with the travel request as a title. Then the defined travel data is my initial um, stage. I have the approved travel and the organized travel. I can modify the travel data, change the information in here, just adjust the date, for example, and complete this. However, as of now, I do not have the possibility to go to the approved travel and that is what we are going to look at next. So back to design, it, we are basically in this uh, stage define travel data where we can go ahead and uh, continue then eventually. Therefore we have two possibilities. First, we can go ahead and uh, complete everything which is in there. But since our modified travel data a task has the repetition, this is not possible since that task is always in there. We could say that second uh, we mark it as autocomplete. When we do that, it would complete as soon as there's nothing active in there, which would mean that it would directly complete since the modified travel data by default is not active. So that's not a good, good option as well. So third, we can go ahead and say explicitly that we would like to terminate the stage at a given point of time. Therefore, we are going to use the user event listener, which is here below the listeners in that list and just place it in here. We are going to call this one file for approval and then we can use a sentry those are the diamonds over here. We are using the um, exit sentry and just place that on the border of our stage. You should have seen that there is a green border basically as soon as we uh, let that go, like it is highlighting uh, right now. So that is the point when it is probably connected to this um, stage. Now here we have two possibilities. Uh, either we leave it as it is since right now the exit event type is exit. Then we would need to change this sentry which we have over here um, uh, going to the next one that it, uh, event type is basically on exit. Or we go ahead for uh, this uh, sentry and say that is supposed to be on the exit event type complete. Now actually there are exit complete and force complete and the difference between complete and force complete is that for complete everything must be not active in there and in case you have something active uh, it is going to fail. Now when you have still an open task which you are supposed to complete we wouldn't allow to complete that stage. That is why we are going for complete. Now, to make that a little bit more user friendly, we can go ahead and say this file for approval, uh, user event listeners, only there in case our stage is completable, since as of now, it would be basically always visible. Therefore, we uh, can go here to the advanced section and say then the available condition is supposed to be uh, cmmn colon is stage completable and only in this case 
it should be available and with that visible. So with that, we ensure that the user event listener is only there when it's supposed to be there. We can save this and then publish it. And then we can create a new case with which we can try that out. So let's say again, new work. We have uh, travel to Paris. I skipped the travel notes for now since they are not mandatory from Zurich to Paris. Next week we would like to travel and we create our travel request. Now we can either file that for approval or modify the travel data. Those are our two options. So let's say we modify the travel data first. We adjust, for example, the date. And then um, once that is done, we file it for approval. As soon as we do that, our case is completed. And that is the case because our approved travel and organized travel have nothing in there. And with that, they automatically complete as soon as we reach them. Now going back here, we uh, can add a little bit more to our uh, defined travel data stage. So therefore we could use the spacer tool, for example, uh, to make some space here uh, in between. So let's just uh, make there a little bit more space and then we can go ahead and add another uh, human task, for example, in there. So let's say we have in here also a task for um, adding travel details. So like if we would like to have a, a hotel, how we would like to be transported and so on. Um, that one, and let me disable the spacer tool again. Um, that one here uh, is also um, with a form. So let's say here, that's the add travel details form. And we are creating this new form. We are also opening it for editing. We have seen the basic fields like text already in the last video. Let's look at other fields, for example, the radio buttons. When I take the radio buttons and uh, that I could take, for example, for transportation, I can say in here, that we would like to have a uh, data source in here for the transportation. That data source is supposed to be static. We would like to have a few items like public transportation. And public transportation is also going to be the value. So the text is what is visible to the user. That's also the reason why you can translate it. So um, for example here, uh, we could uh, also provide the German version and the value is what we are going to store on our form itself. I'm not going to do translations for all of them just because uh, it is taking a lot of time. You could actually also filter out the I18N key and then export an uh, Excel sheet to do the actual translations. Um, which is helpful since normally you as a, a citizen developer or modeler, uh, you do not necessarily know all the languages and then you can give that to somebody who knows them. Now for the transportation, I have here now all the different options. We see them here as a preview and in the uh, braces, we also see basically what is going to be stored for each of those values. Let's make this field uh, required. So we would like the user uh, to make that uh, filled out. And then we can uh, add as a next field travel cards. So depending on where you are on which mode you choose, uh, there are potential uh, cards that you uh, can collect points. And then we are going to add the accommodation as a next field. Um, that is a radio button as well. And we have here uh, different choices. Hotel with breakfast. I am always uh, in favor of that. Then we just have a um, uh, hotel. 
And as a next uh, and last one, we just say that you don't need anything at, uh, uh, anything at all. So um, with that, we can just skip that. That also allows us to make this field uh, required since you always should be able to fill something out. As a next, we are going to add a, a simple number field for the estimated cost. Here I'm saying for this field um, that it is also required. So you should estimate how much it is going to cost. And we are also setting then a uh, prefix, uh, which is basically the unit uh, the user should provide the estimation in there. And we select the number format as well. For both of them, I picked here now the Swiss version. Feel free to pick uh, basically the for your local unit uh, for those. Then uh, I am going to add one last thing, the special requirements. That's a multi-line text field. So um, that allows us to just add further notes in here. Let's uh, save this form. And uh, we are now going back uh, to our uh, work form where we can say, okay, in addition to our current sub form, which we have in here, which are our travel details. So let's quickly label that also as travel details. And we uh, probably also want to add a border around it that is here inside the um, uh, form settings. Uh, we can just say show border um, that it looks nice. Let's say we are adding here another one. That one we are going to um, call actually travel details. And that here is, let me correct that, our travel request. And for this one, the travel details, we also link our existing form, which is the uh, travel details form. And uh, we are saying we would like to have a border here as well. And then on the visibility, we also say that this is not enabled. Now we have a nice little form in here. You can actually directly preview that as well, how it is supposed to look like with that play icon. There we see the travel uh, request as well as the travel details in here with all the form data. You can then switch back to the modeling mode by pressing the uh, button next to it. And we now just quickly also change in the same pattern our modified travel data form. So in here, uh, we just say this here is our travel request. And then uh, we are adding the border as well for this one. Uh, that one is not disabled. so. That setting we don't need to check here. Then we have our travel details and that one um, gets the border as well. And what I forgot is I also need to link our existing form in here, which is our travel uh, details form. So with that, I think we have everything and we can just um, save that, save actually all, since we also added the form to the case. And now we can go ahead and publish it. <clears throat> Once published, let's go back to Flowable Work, where we can say New Work. Then this is our travel to Paris, which is going to be Zurich, destination is Paris, and we are traveling next week. And let's create the travel request. Here we can say, okay, we would like to travel with public transportation. I have a GA, which is a Swiss local um, uh, card. Then we are estimating 1,500 for that trip. And please ensure that there is a nice breakfast. And we then um, complete this add travel details task, 
we have here also the file for approval now or we can modify our travel where we have both information available so we could say okay the cost is a little bit less <clears throat> for example 1250 and we are also traveling one day less and let's complete that one when we look now at the work, work form we see all the information which we entered before and we can now file it for approval. Once we filed it for approval, the approved travel actually comes next. We didn't work on that one yet. That is what we are going to look at in the next video. There we are also checking out business processes and um, basically how we can then handle that business decision inside our case. I'm looking forward to that one, so see you next time.